Joining us now is Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, former Chief of Staff to Secretary of State Colin Powell. Colonel Wilkerson, it is great to have you back on the show. Thanks for joining us. Good to be here. I have to ask your reaction, first of all, to uh, Liz Cheney attacking you in the way that she did yesterday morning on ABC. Rachel, I don't pay a lot of attention to Liz Cheney. Uh, her bona fides are that she's the former vice president's daughter, just as her bona fides when she was PDAS and DAS in the Secretary uh, of State's office for Near Eastern Affairs were that uh, she was the daughter of the vice president, meaning that for Dick Cheney, nepotism was alive and well in his government. Mm. Well, you've, as you've gotten this pushback from Liz Cheney and from others, uh, let's get specific about your accusation and the way that it's being taken apart. You wrote, um, quote, the administration authorized harsh interrogation in April and May of 2002. Its principal priority, you said, for intelligence was not aimed at preempting another terrorist attack on the U.S., but discovering a smoking gun linking Iraq and Al Qaeda. So you're saying the number one priority of those interrogations, of the intelligence uh, direction of those investigations was to get an Iraq and al-Qaeda link? I'm saying that by that time we had done some things that uh, uh, had severely limited al-Qaeda's operational reach, not the least of which was to tear, their, uh, tear them a new uh, rear end in Afghanistan. But we'd done some other very sophisticated things too that had put al-Qaeda on very much on the defensive. Uh, at that point, uh, even though the chatter might have gone up at times, I think those of us who were really in the business of, of looking at this knew that um, the possibility of another attack had receded somewhat. So at that point, as we were building up the march to war with Iraq, uh, it's come to my attention in, in a number of ways, independently corroborating one another, that our priorities at least were equal, if not exceeding, uh, the priority to thwart another attack, to find out intelligence that would link al-Qaeda with Baghdad, with the Mukhabarat, and give uh, the administration a lot more weight in its marketing of the war with Iraq when uh, that marketing commenced. You also said, and I'll ask you about this other specific language that you used, you said, so furious was this effort that on one particular detainee, even when the interrogation team had reported to Cheney's office that their detainee was compliant, meaning the team recommended no more torture, the VP's office ordered them to continue the enhanced methods. The detainee had not revealed any al-Qaeda Baghdad contacts yet. Then you say this ceased only after Ibn al-Sheikh al-Libi under waterboarding in Egypt revealed such contacts. Are you saying that it was Cheney's office ordering the waterboarding in Egypt of al-Libi or are you talking about someone else? No, I'm talking about uh, another individual and it's uh, the pushback against me from even my own uh, interlocutors uh, in the last 24 to 48 hours has been, well, Tenet gave those instructions, not the vice president. Mm. Uh, and my reaction has been, anytime George Tenet gave instructions like that, he had cover from the vice president, otherwise George Tenet would never give instructions like that. This is a very close group of people who were performing this. Um, the only one I don't know whether it included or not was the president of the United States. There's still grave doubt in my mind that the president was very intimately involved in the details of this process. I think it was almost exclusively the vice president. And the vice president kept this information very close for obvious reasons. He didn't want it to leak and it was a very secret operation and the vice president didn't want anyone to know about it other than those with a need to know meaning those who were actually executing it or carrying out his instructions to execute it in this case the dci george Tennant. so my assumption that it came from the vice president's office i think is based on pretty firm ground and when, when you talk about your investigations into these matters and the independent corroborating information you've been able to put together, is, is, were these things that you knew about contemporaneously or are other people telling you this now in retrospect knowing that you're speaking out essentially in an effort to try to get this information out there into the public sphere? That's certainly part of it. But in uh, 2004, April, when the photographs from Abu Ghraib were imminent, Secretary Powell came to my office and uh, he walked through the door and he said, I need you and Will Taft, his legal advisor, to get to the bottom of this. How did we get to Abu Ghraib? How did we, give me a chronology, give me the reasons how we got there. And I began at that point an investigation and I kept up with that investigation, classified documents, unclassified documents and so forth throughout uh, the rest of the year until the election and until January we left the State Department. And then after that, I still had a grave interest in it, even though I did not have the classified documents anymore, 
Uh, lots of people made those documents available to me as soon as they became unclassified. And I began to put together my own audit trail, as it were, as to how all of this happened. And I created a lot of contacts in doing that, in the agency, in the military, in the diplomatic service, and so forth. And a lot of people have talked to me over that time, and I have been very careful to corroborate what I'm saying with multiple sources just as I was taught to do by George Tenet out at the CIA as we prepared Powell for the 5 February presentation at the UN. Um, and I've been very careful about how I put these sources together. And I've not spoken out until I had uh, a very firm idea in my mind of what was happening and when. I am a little confused about Al Libby, I'll admit that. Uh, because we didn't learn about him until we were at the CIA getting ready to go to New York and present uh, Powell's presentation. Uh, I'm told now that he was uh, tortured uh, as early as February 2002, which was a year before that. So I've still got to put that piece together. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, former Chief of Staff to Secretary of State Colin Powell, independent torture investigator on behalf of the nation. <laughs> Thank you for your time tonight, sir. It's always good to have you on the show. Thank you, Rachel.